Thank you, Dr. Asiri. Um, when speaking about proximal junctional complications in long spine fusions, this is a case example where this patient has previous L3 to S1 uh, spinal fusion. And you could see here he developed um, uh, proximal uh, adjacent segment disease and degeneration with disc herniation and stenosis. And he actually required extension of fusion, revision of, of uh, decompression. And because he had L5S1 nonunion, I extended him to the pelvis. This is a fairly common condition, and we see it a lot, but this is not the topic um, I would like to cover today. The presentation is more about these cases where they had long fusion from the thoracolumbar junction down to the pelvis, and acutely they developed acute uh, failure and fracture. So why did this happen? Is it the choice of the levels? Did, did the surgeon stop at a kyphotic level? Are there any biomechanical factors? Was there violation of the posterior ligamentous complex? Are there patient-related factors, such as uh, neuromuscular conditions or poor bone quality and osteoporosis? And I'll try as much as I can to cover these points and try to figure out uh, through the literature and through some of our experience at my hospital along with my partner, Dr. Sami Reisa, and the cases that we faced. So first, looking at the epidemiology and uh, definition, it's accepted that proximal junctional kyphosis is an increase of five degrees than the expected normal uh, at that level. However, proximal junctional failure is more dramatic. It's an increase of 10 degrees with fracture and failure and possible ligamentous disrupt uh, disruption. And most of the time, this will require um, revision surgery and extension of fusion. And it may even cause neurological deficit. Uh, looking at the epidemiology, these two papers by Dr. Boachi from New York, uh, they looked at consecutive patients over 150 cases, and the incidence is pretty high. PGK and PJF are 20%. And the key from these papers is 70 or 75% of them occur in the first three months. So while you're following your patients, hopefully if you pass the three months timeline and they did not develop PJK, you are probably out of the complication and it's not gonna happen, hopefully. Uh, but a lot of them are early failures. Now, the other literature, the incidence is variable, and it goes from 20% to 40%, actually. Uh, there are some classifications mentioned. Uh, this classification also by Dr. Boachi, where it's a descriptive classification, uh, and the, you would discuss was the failure in ligament, or is it bone or combined, and the amount of kyphosis, and is there a spondylolisthesis at the level, or is it just a fracture? Uh, now, there's another classification by the International Spine Deformity Study Group, and this is a general guidelines with a scoring system, and their recommendation, if your score is above eight, you should revise the patient. And it's, a lot of these cases are obvious that they need revision, but there are some gray areas and gray zones, and this is a, a helpful tool where if you're not, if, if the surgeon's in doubt, should I revise the case or not, uh, as a guideline uh, to operate based on the score that, uh, that you see. So looking at it, uh, we'll be discussing risk factors and hopefully uh, how to prevent it and some solutions for the complications. So the risk factors could be divided in different ways. Is it the choice of levels? And when I talk about the choice of levels in those long spine fusions, we need to discuss the lower end and the distal end and the upper end. Looking at the upper end, in general it's accepted. You either stop at the thoracolumbar junction between T10 and L2 or you go to the upper thoracic and try as much as you can avoiding the mid-thoracic area as this is the natural kyphosis of the thoracic spine and they do have height of PJK. Uh, now, I will also look at radiological factors and uh, there are a few papers that discuss could you predict if this, this patient is gonna develop PJK if you do T10 to pelvis fusion and should you do specific preventive measures and try to figure out what, uh, 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 if, if they need something more to be done, not just the fusion. I'm gonna look at bio, 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 uh, biomechanics as well, and then we'll discuss shortly the uh, BMD uh, as osteoporosis, as patient-related factors and neurological uh, pathologies. So when you look at the choice of levels, it is well known that whenever you go with long fusion down to the sacrum or pelvis, you are at high risk of PJK. And this was also uh, discussed in this paper. Uh, they, they clearly classified that going down to the pelvis compared to stopping at L5 is a risk of, uh, is, 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 it puts the patients at higher risk of developing PJK and PJF and require revision, requiring revision surgery. Now, does this mean we should stop at L5 in long fusions? 
this paper from Dr. Linke showed that when you do long fusion and stuff at L5, 70% of these patients developed adjacent segment disease and arthritis at L5-S1, which led to worsening of their sagittal balance due to arthritis, and a lot of them required revision surgery. So I came across this case. She has degenerative uh, scoliosis, multi-level spinal stenosis. She had a healthy L5-S1 disc, and she required thoracolumbar fusion from T12 down to L5 or S1. I was making up my mind due to the healthy L5-S1 disc, and I was worried about developing a PJK. I thought I could stop at L5, and I was satisfied. The patient was happy. However, six months later, she developed an union despite ha having interbody fusion at uh, L5-S1. So you may either develop adjacent segment disease or an union. This is another complication that happens when you stop at, when you do long segment and you stop at L5. And eventually she required extension to the pelvis. Luckily, she did not develop PJK. And this is over one year follow-up. Uh, keeping in mind, stopping at L5, you have to be very strict and have proper selection criteria. You have to have healthy L5-S1 disc. There is no stenosis at L5-S1 and no spondylolisthesis, And there is a relatively small uh, curve and, uh, and no refraction, fractional curve at the bottom of the uh, deformity. So moving on to the upper end of your construct, when you stop at thoracolumbar junction, uh, the, historically stopping at L1 had high ferial rate over 60%. And several papers later on advocated that you should go to the, with the construct up to T10, as this is the true junction, at, uh, since they have uh, fixed ribs at this area. But at another paper by Dr. Linke looked at the difference of cases where you go th long thoracic, uh, long fusion, either at T9 or L1 at any of these levels, and they all have relatively high rate of PJK, but there was no any statistical significance whether you stop at T9 or L1 or T10 or any area in the thoracolumbar uh, junction. So the recommendation from this paper was to choose the stable and neutral vertebra. We came across this case. This patient had already four surgeries, two of them to treat spondylolisthesis at L4-5. She developed adjacent segment disease. She had extension of fusion. She developed infection. We ended up removing the implant just to control the infection and multiple INDs. She developed uh, sagittal and coronal imbalance. And we thought that we could stop at T10, and we actually did get her, uh, we did improve her deformity, both coronally and sagittally. However, she ended up developing PJK, and she would require extension of fusion. So can we predict PJK? There are two, uh, I found this paper from uh, uh, University of uh, San, San Francisco, where they looked at 90 consecutive patients, where they had thoracolumbar fusion down to the sacrum, and they, looked, they had over 40% of PJK rate, and they wanted to classify what are the risk factors. And the most important risk factors were uh, requiring high correction and uh, change in lumbar lordosis pre-op to post-op of over 30 degrees. And they found that with the protective mechanisms are having proper alignment uh, and uh, proper uh, uh, lumbar lordosis pelvic incidence mismatch. This was actually my, uh, one, of, uh, uh, one of my publications, which was presented at NAS. We had the same project. We looked at 100 patients during my fellowship. They had T10 to pelvis fusion. We had 50% uh, PJK and revision rates. And the same risk factor was identified, where whatever you do pre-op to post-op change in lumbar lordosis, and you're doing major, uh, major correction, they did develop PJK. So this takes us to the uh, next step. Should we end our construct at the top of the thoracic spine? This meta-analysis showed that going all the way to the top between T2 and T4 is a protective mechanism uh, to developing PJK. Uh, however, they usually fail in spondylolisthesis compared to fracture when you stop at the lower part, and it has higher rate of uh, neurological injury. Uh, so it, it may be safer. Less, it, it may be less incidence of PJK, but it's definitely higher risk and bigger surgery. And uh, when you revise it, you have to go all the way to the cervical, and the patients go on into uh, complication after another. This case presented to us where she had initially fracture, treated. She actually developed TB, uh, and it affected her implants. And we thought that the only way to revise her, take her all the way to T4 down to the pelvis with multiple rod construct, and despite going all the way to the top, she developed PJK as well. 
and she will require revision. Looking at the biomechanical factors, these two cadaver studies emphasize that whenever you violate the posterior ligamentous com uh, uh, complex, you are putting your patient at a higher risk of PJK. So it's really uh, important when you're doing your dissection, you're putting your implants to maintain at least two or three levels of the upper part of the posterior ligamentous complex. Uh, looking at the patient risk factors, there are two important risk factors to consider, osteoporosis and neuromuscular condition. This patient was transferred to my partner, Dr. Sami, uh, from a neighboring country. She had multiple spine surgeries, and as you could see also hip fracture, which was fixed. They never did a uh, DEXA scan, and she has oste terrible osteoporosis, and she kept failing, and you could see that she has proximal and distal junctional kyphosis, uh, as you could see here. And we thought well, she definitely needs extension to the sacrum, but the question was, should we go to the pelvis? We ended up stopping at L4. We were able to correct her deformity quite well, but the most important was getting a DEXA scan, getting your endocrinologist involved, and starting proper osteoporosis treatment. Otherwise, she will keep failing. And this is the most important factor in this case. And you could see the proper uh, sagittal uh, uh, alignment uh, correction that was achieved. So looking at neuromuscular conditions, our colleague here, uh, Dr. Anwar Burghali, published this paper, and they looked at patients with Parkinson's who had long spine fusions, and the revision rate was over 50%. We faced this case recently. Uh, she, was, she has Parkinsonism. She had flat back, which was iatrogenic from previous surgery, and she has major, uh, mainly sagittal unbalance of over 20 centimeters. Those cases usually require a proximal uh, pedicle subtraction osteotomy and long spine fusion, which was in this case. We were able to correct her sagittal balance. However, on follow-up, she developed PJK, which was severely painful, and due to the instability, she was developing myelopathy, and we had to extend her uh, to T2, actually. So prevention measures. There are so many preventive measures mentioned in the literature. Using cement when you're doing T10 to pelvis, or using hooks when you're, going up, when, when you're performing upper thoracic down to the pelvis. Some papers talk about transition rod. Definitely choosing the correct level, in my opinion, is the most important preventive measure. measure. Uh, also, there are new papers that talk about using minimally invasive uh, screws at the top of the construct as a preventive measure as well. Dr. Kibesh and his, uh, his colleagues looked biomechanically and clinically on using cementation of uh, the upper instrumented vertebra uh, to, to cement augment the screws and doing vertebroplasty at the level above. And they proved both clinically and biomechanically on cadavers that this works and prevents PJK. Those are one of our cases where uh, this patient had multi-level degener uh, uh, degenerative scoliosis and spinal stenosis. And in this case, at least, it did work. We used T10 to pelvis. We fused in T10 to pelvis, multi-level decompression with cement augmentation at the top two levels. Um, this paper discussed and proved that using a hook at the top of the construct when you're doing upper thoracic spine fusion down to the pelvis reduced PJK, and they actually had two groups where you had the upper uh, construct with pedicle screws versus hooks, and there were no PJKs. There were no PJKs developed with the uh, uh, hook uh, uh, subgroup in, in the series. So in summary, PJK is a major complication related to major spine surgeries, and many of them require uh, revision, and they may lead to neurological deficit. The key, prevent the key is here is prevention, choosing your uh, levels properly with proper planning, and correct as much as you can uh, p p modifiable patient risk factors, and consider those preventive measures that I mentioned. Thank you very much.